Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to go over everything that you need to get into the basics of soft soldering. So we're going to go over tools, supplies, and everything you need to get into it. We do have a hashtag winner for today. We're going to get that for you right now. The hashtag for today, soft soldering. Make sure you put that in the comments for this video. That's going to enter you into a drawing for 10% off any of the courses that we have in 2023, including the January 19th day course on soldering. We're going to go over soft soldering and hard soldering techniques. So this is going to be a good jump start, jump start, jump start to get into that. Uh, so make sure you take soft soldering, put that in the comments below. The winners that we have for today, uh, we have a single winner and it is Angie Montavo. Angie, send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com and I will get you your prize. And now, Ryan, we have all of the courses we do. On special at musicmedic.com under the education section. So if you're the winner, you're going to get 10% off plus the additional discount that's already on the website. So that could be, I don't know, whatever that percentage Multiple is off. Multiple percentages of discounts. So those courses are on sale until December 6th. So take advantage, take advantage, take advantage of those. And uh, we will make sure you, that you get your prize, Angie. So... Uh, Ryan, let's get into this. We're going to talk about the tools and supplies that we needed to get into the soft soldering, soft soldering yes, you world. We have a few of those. Okay. Yeah, we're in the at the soft at the soldering bench here in the Saks Pro Shop, and you can see that's why this tabletop is all burnt. Mm. Um, but we're going to go over a couple of the basic tools that you need to get into soft soldering. Okay. Unless you're from across the Atlantic, which in case you're into soft soldering. Soldering. So oh, like good the accent. Them. Yep. So the first things first is we need some kind of heat source. And for this, we're going to use one of these guys. Typically, you know, some kind of butane refillable torch here. Has some kind of igniter, although most of the time they're they're broken. Uh, or you can use one of these smaller pen torches as well. Again, we're doing soft soldering, so the temperature is much lower than if we were doing hard soldering. We're not going to talk about hard soldering. If you want to learn more, learn more about that, put in hashtag soft soldering into the comments, get 10% off discounts, blah, 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 all that fun stuff I'm required to say by law. Like, share, and subscribe. But, yeah, there you go. Like, share, and subscribe. Click the bell. Click the bell. Uh, but torches, these are very nice for getting into, again, soft soldering. Okay. Uh, when you move up, you eventually move into something like this, which is more of a uh, Smith torch with yep. the single line, which runs into, I believe, acetylene uh, is what we're using for a lot of the heavier duty mm -hmm. soldering applications. But to start out, these are perfectly fine to okay, start out good. soft soldering. Uh, the next thing you need, you'll need when you're getting to soldering is solder. Okay, and we have a couple different types that we use in the band instrument repair world. What I really like to use here in the Sax Pro Shop is this stuff. It is called Stay Bright. It is a lead-free solder. Uh, band instrument repair world still on occasion will use lead-based solder. Okay, um, and this is an example of that here. Uh, I will use again, like I said, most of the time. Uh, a stay bright, which is the lead-free solder, uh, you know, environmental concerns and whatnot. Sure. Uh, don't eat your solder, though, even, even if you are using lead-based lead solder. Don't eat it. Um, so, yeah, no. and you can see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good tip, good tip. Uh, Do you flatten it ever? Uh, uh, yes, you I know can. some guys use flat solder yep, or they you, flatten it out. Yeah, you can get the, the ribbon solder or you can just take this stuff with a pair of pliers and flatten it out and make it uh, into a ribbon solder, which does help a little bit when you are melting and flowing the solder into joints and areas. Okay. Uh, so we have our, our two different types of solder. If you're wanting to start out, you can get one of these guys right here, which is a Stay Bright little kit, which comes with a coil of their Stay Bright lead-free soft solder and a bottle of flux i like that because the flux is a good quality flux it is you get a small amount of solder but enough to really get started I mean, you can do quite a bit i mean with with this coil right here you mm -hmm. know just about every every part of the saxophone uh, you can get with maybe a length this big okay so, um so you can get the kit get yourself started out with it comes with the solder and the flux speaking of flux we have well, not this stuff. This is different. Mm. Uh, you, we have just typically what I'll use in the Saks Pro Shop, which is the Tix Flux, which does come in a nice little bottle with the brush applicator. Here's a tip for you, though. If you want to make it just a little bit easier and a little less messy, you can actually fill some of your flux into a needle bottle oiler. Uh, and we do have them. You can see here. So you can fill that. The nice thing is it comes with a 
flask filling funnel. I uh, like that. Yes, which, yeah. which does make it a little bit easier to fill the bottles mm. when you're pouring this in here. Um, it's and good for your, yeah. Yeah, so it just makes it a little bit easier. Make sure you label it flux. Make sure you don't use this as key oil. Do not use it as key oil. Uh, do, now, flux can rust those tips. Is that a problem over it, time? It or can be, How do you yes. deal with that? Yeah, over time, that, that flux being an acid will tend to eat away at this metal tip, uh, which is, it's going to happen. Uh, it may take quite a while, a year or so. Who knows? Uh, but the nice thing is when you get the needle oilers, you do get a few in the bag that does come with the the uh, the funnel so you can just refill them uh, the other thing I've done is I've actually snipped off the rusted tip if it kind of rushed shut oh. you can snip it off uh, and then can continue to use that as well so solder flux there's now this... now Ryan I have a question uh, what is that in your hand there this Ant is in, in this hand well there's nothing in, in this hand right here they have some some ticks anti-flux uh, and this is what you're gonna put on certain areas uh, in order to prevent solder from flowing um, that's all I'm going to say about that. If you want to learn more, you can sign up for our course. Soldering course. Soldering on... course, January 19th via Zoom. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so, so we've talked about flux. We've talked about anti-flux. Let's yeah. now talk about the next thing, which is... Ooh, we have some. That? We have some. If you notice this this bench top right here, this is this is a wooden bench underneath, but we have this kind of cement board on top, which does help with a lot of, well not lighting things on fire. You can also use things like this. This is just a honeycomb. Uh, mm. You know, you can put your parts on top of it. It has these little holes. Um, we also have this ceramic board you can put down if you're doing some small soldering applications. Let's say, you know, at your bench and you don't have a separate area for soldering, you can put one of these down. Uh, and if you accidentally, you know, put your torch, heat it up, uh, it's not going to burn through your wooden tabletop. So these are really nice to have. Uh, and you can see I have a bunch of, bunch of broken pieces and whatnot. Um, I've also used old bench blocks mm. for holding things. And you notice these are old and rusty. Uh, that is what the flux will do to that steel. So don't use your good bench block. Keep a separate one on your bench for leveling pad cups and doing whatever else, flattening springs. Uh, and I use these two over here at the soldering bench for holding onto parts or, or you know, being able to put something on top. Uh, that works very nice. So, Ryan, that's... Uh, oh, continue, continue. No, 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 you're so good. Basically, Ask we're talking... We're kind of getting into the... We've talked about flux. We've talked about solder. We've talked about heat. We're getting into kind of the fixturing. Yes, holding right? on to things, you know. Okay. You can use other things like clips. You know, these soldering clips, if you have to solder on, uh, I don't know, a strap ring or a post or whatever. These clips are very easy and very handy. Uh, you know, cross-lock tweezers. And you can see, again, these are not my good, nice cross-lock tweezers mm -hmm. I use for putting materials on. This is something that I keep at my soldering bench uh, because it is nasty and rusted and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Cross-lock tweezers are very nice as well. Uh, even something like this guy, kind of a fixturing jig, you know, that I can kind of position. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Sorry, I didn't say that. Was, that was not me. That was, the, that was the jig. That was the jig talking. Uh, so, uh, something like this. I even also keep an old vice and you can see it's all nasty and rusted uh and in case i need to hold on to parts uh you know in a vice uh we're getting into also binding things together we can use this iron binding wire which is very nice for jigging parts on you can wrap this around keep a post onto a body when you're doing some soldering strap mm -hmm. ring whatever else uh bonus tip where's our bonus tip graphic uh, we're working on it we're working a bonus tip graphic Insert bonus tip graphic here. Um, you can actually take this and actually insert it into this honeycomb and actually jig parts down if you're doing some soldering work. Mm -hmm. um, so, but iron binding wire is very handy to have when you're jigging parts up. Okay, Ryan, so that's kind of how we jig things. Let's talk yep. about some cleanup. Cleanup stuff. So, traditional methods of cleanup, a lot of guys like to use scrapers, you know, scraping the excess solder. Uh, these are great, you know, just a triangular scraper. Or this guy right here, the world's best scraper. I still have yet to see my my uh, royalty check, my mm. endorsement check for, we'll get for right pitching. right on that. Yeah, pitching this. But this is great for scraping all the old solder off. You that can use nice. old files as well. Mm. Uh, I also like to use these guys, sanding sticks of a variety of different grits uh, mm. for sanding off, you know, cleaning up, um, you know, old solder. These guys are very handy as well. You can see my whole assortment of wheels, bristle discs. Yes, bristle discs. I have the polishing wheels, um, and these are fantastic, especially when you're stacking them like this. You can clean up a nice big 
wide area. Um, and it makes it much, much easier versus getting in there and kind of buffing things away. Um, we also have these guys here, which are silicone polishing wheels, which are great for getting in between flanges, getting around a foot, guard foot you may have resoldered, maybe got a little sloppy with your soldering. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can use these guys uh, to clean all that up. Uh, let's see what else. What other tips did I have for them? Uh, there, here's a here's a handy tip. I keep a bottle of spray on my soldering bench, just in case people get too close when I'm soldering, I can get back. I'm soldering over here, get back. No, I can use this just in case, you know, maybe a, 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 I, I heat the parts up too much or I want to cool quickly cool the solder or just bring it down the temperature. We're not going to get into whether or not you, you quench or you don't quench. If okay. you want to learn more about that, sign up January 19th. It's via Zoom. You don't even have to leave your house. You don't even have to put pants on. Uh, you know, it's all via Zoom, and Very it's cool. going to be a day course where I talk about all kinds of soldering, more of this stuff, and I get more into depth on soldering. Okay, very good. So, Ryan, I do have a couple of questions for you. Yes, lay it on. Uh, let's see. Let me just kind of let's see what do I got here. Um, once we have the supplies, how do we get started? I understand they have to take the course January nineteenth. Yep. But how do we get started? What's a good way to get into good it? A good way to get started is, first off, don't practice on your good instrument. Uh, ask to borrow your friend's instrument. By the way, Rich, I need to borrow your horn for a mm, little bit. Okay. Um, ask me, or you can just get a Junker Project horn. Uh, they are good to have as well. Um, you know, just that way you can practice soldering on, you know, key guard flanges and strap rings and thumb hooks and, and certain things like that. Uh, if you do take our soldering course, you'll learn what um, parts on the saxophone are soft soldered. And what parts are hard soldered? Actually, I guess what parts are soft soldered? Right here, hashtag soft solder. And what parts are hard soldered? Okay. So you'll learn the difference which um, which applications are used and, and what applications. Okay, very, <laughs> very good. <laughs> what about the supplies for hard soldering? Can we use just a some lot of these yeah, crossover? Absolutely. A lot of this stuff you can use, like a lot of the fixturing and holding stuff and the cleanup stuff, uh, that all can be used for hard soldering. The biggest difference is. The fluxes or, or the solder that you would actually be using uh, are going to be different. The flux is probably going to be different, and the torch uh, is definitely going to be different. This guy right here, no matter how long you hold it on, you cannot really do any hard soldering. You need a much higher temperature for hard soldering. It's a much, uh, 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 you know, obviously we'd have to use maybe a, a acetylene or a tube gas mixture or whatever. Uh, but this blazer torch is perfect for regular soldering, soft soldering applications. It's great for padding as well. Hmm. Although I prefer to use an air torch, but that's just me. Sure. So. Very good. Okay. okay. I like the lighting in here. It is. It's, it's, our, like it's our mood lighting. Uh, yeah. Well, Ryan, thank yeah. you so much for that uh, excellent demonstration of everything we need to get into soft soldering. Make sure that you guys sign up for the January 19th course. Uh, and Joshua Adam, a shout out to you, my friend. Thank you for the kind comment. And to Robert, thank you for the soft soldering hashtag. Yeah. Make sure you guys take soft soldering. Put that in the comments below so you can be entered into the drawing for 10% off any of the courses that we have coming up next year, including the January 19th one uh, on soft soldering via Zoom. And uh, make sure that you go check out musicmedic.com for the courses because they're all on sale until December 6th. Um, December that's 6th. December 6th. Something about that date. All right, folks. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, happy repairing.